Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. So today I thought I would film a Q&A because I do get quite a lot of questions on some of my videos and I just wanted to answer them in a video rather than just reply to them. And I also posted a video asking for some questions. The only questions that I won't answer are ones that I've perhaps answered before, ones that I don't want to answer or just if the video gets too long and I don't have time to answer them. And there is also some questions that some people have answered themselves. I haven't done a QA and a in a while. Um, a lot of the questions that I tend to get in my Q&As are kind of, well, they used to be revision based, but we do have quite a few different ones here today. So let's get into the video. Also, I just wanted to point out that this is going to be quite a casual video and then the next one that I post is also going to be quite casual because as this video goes up, I should be in Freshers Week of Uni. Sorry, I feel like that's a bit blurred. Okay, I should be doing Freshers Week of Uni. Hopefully that's going well. I am going to be vlogging that week. So if you want to see that vlog, then stay tuned. But I'm going to be vlogging that week, just kind of giving my opinions on how I feel every single day. So hopefully it's a, it's a decent week. Some of the questions are related to that as well. The point of what I was just about to say is that I'm not going to be in my bathroom for too much longer. I am going to make a little autumn background and I'm going to have that background for a while. Okay, so Serena T asked, you said next week is Freshers Week um, for you, so I'm assuming you're going to uni. Yes, I am. What uni are you going to and what are you going to study? Well, I didn't in previous videos say what university I was going to, but I don't really think it matters like whether I say it or not. I'm going to Lincoln University and that's like near to where I live, like it's the closest uni to where I live, so it just kind of makes sense. I live in Lincoln. So I, I'm going there and I'm studying accounting and finance. I have known that I've wanted to do that for quite a few years. So I think that's definitely something that I want to do. It's not just an idea that I plucked up one day. I have wanted to do accounting and be become an accountant or something like that um, for many years. So I think this is the right path for me and the right course for me. So the next question, and this person actually asked a few questions and these are quite good ones. So Karis Jenkins asked, what's your biggest problem with the education system now obviously i have to think personally from my point of view and my perspective based on my upbringing and my life and my experience with school i personally think what i found most difficult about the education system and what i feel most passionately about is the lack of understanding of children's mental health issues. And I do talk about this quite a lot on my channel and also on my Snapchat. If you don't follow my Snapchat or you don't have me on Snapchat, then my name will be on screen. I do post a lot about my opinions on there that I wouldn't really post anywhere else. You can go and follow me on there if you want to and add me and I might add you back. So I just think that teachers and head teachers and you know, just everyone involved in the education system in a school environment have such a lack of understanding of how to deal with children that have mental health problems and it isn't obvious at all when a child does. There's a spectrum of different mental health issues and I think teachers don't know how to deal with them all because there's so many and they also don't know how to recognise them and I think that kind of should be something that is educated to a teacher before they have the job because the way a teacher is with the children impacts them massively. The way a teacher deals with a child really affects their mental health and affects the way that they are. And I know this from experience, because obviously I've said this before, but I had selective mutism and the way that teach some teachers were with me made me worse and made me feel more anxious about myself and more self-conscious and it was the way that they've acted and looking back I can kind of recognise that what they were trying to do is they were trying to involve me in things that I necessarily didn't find, com you know, I didn't feel comfortable involving myself with and I don't think pushing a child to do something is ever a good thing to do. Things like that can mentally scar people and I know that you have to push yourself in life but it's so much more difficult when you're a child and it can often affect the way that you are later in life and bad memories, that kind of thing. 
and I know that there is definitely teachers out there that do understand how to deal with children because I've experienced those teachers and I felt 100% comfortable around them and they, you know, push you in a way that is within your comfort zone and anything you're not comfortable with. So I think what, what I have an issue with in the education system is lack of understanding of people's different mental health problems and that they don't but, you know that they, they struggle to deal with them in the correct way so maybe more education for teachers are based on how to deal with that I feel like I answered that question so weirdly but it's because you know I'm not really planning um, these answers but they also ask something that you can't stand people doing slash a pet peeve this basically links on to the last question I can't stand it when somebody judges somebody else without knowing them or without you know, not even without knowing them. You can't judge somebody and you can't be nasty to somebody or make a comment about somebody until you know everything about them and you will never know everything about somebody. You never know what someone's going through. You never know how they're feeling or what they're thinking. And something that you say or do can, can change their mood instantly just like that. You can make them, you can push them over the edge effectively by what you're saying. It might be a throwaway comment to you, but to them, it means a lot. So I think my pet peeve is the people out there that don't understand how their comments can affect other people and they think that they're completely valid to say things like that. Just for an example, some people that I've met talk about anxiety as if it's nothing and they just say, oh for god's sake more people talking about anxiety oh my god like you know it's just shyness you know just do it you know you can't just sit there you know just go in that room just do that why don't they do that and they're talking to me because they don't i haven't told them about my selective mutism i haven't expressed my opinions to them and they're giving their opinions to me without knowing that and i know how completely wrong they are because when you experience anxiety it is not as simple as oh right so you tell me to go in that room with those people in there oh i'll just go and do it then it's so different so i think you can't make comments on something that you've never experienced before and finally they asked what's your favorite makeup brand and favorite product i've actually really started to like revolution um it used to be makeup revolution i've started to really like their makeup because a it's decently priced and B, they've got some really good quality products. Their eyeshadow palettes in collaboration with Soph Does Nails are amazing. So the Soph X Revolution palettes, I've got both of them. And her lipsticks are amazing um, that she brought out with them. And also their concealers. They have recently brought out a foundation that I really, really want to try. And they said favourite makeup product. Um... I would actually have to say my favourite makeup product is one of the Soph X Revolution palettes. I think it's the Soph X Revolution Extra Spice palette that is my favourite. I'll try and leave a picture on screen if I have time. But I, I, yeah, I love that so much at the minute. Amy Kieran Vlogs asked who's your favourite YouTuber. Um, This is... It used to be the Anna Edit and basically the reason why I love her channel is because she's very organised, she's very down to earth, you can tell she's incredibly honest and very relatable. She doesn't make clickbait content, it's very fashion, makeup, lifestyle based, it's just the kind of like a normal person you can tell she's completely normal and that's what i like about her channel but i have really been loving tarty's videos she's like a makeup guru i'm sure you know who she is she's got loads of subscribers sorry there's a bit of hair like on my face so i'm just like what the heck is this there you go um she's a makeup guru so she's a beauty guru and she posts five times a week, Monday to Friday, and her makeup videos have really improved the way that I do my makeup. I know some people will probably beg to differ by looking at my face. Oh, by the way, my skin is a little bit oily today. I'm sorry, but it's my skin, not my makeup. But I, I just feel like she, I don't know, she just makes you feel very calm and relaxed. So if you're into makeup, go and check out her channel. By the way, I'll link the Anna edit down below and Tati as well. The Fashion Notebook asks, are you anxious about meet, meet, uh, are you anxious about meeting new people in uni? The truth be told, yes, but I have done a video on this and I did a video on how I make myself happier and I'll link that down below if you want to go and watch it. It's my tips on how to be a little bit happier or how I make myself happier. But basically 
whenever I feel anxious about something, a situation in life, I am able to make myself feel so much better about that situation. I'm almost able to make myself excited. I do talk about it a little bit more in that video. But I just think, this is my mental state and this is my thought process. Some people in life are so confident, they push themselves into everything and they're completely fine with meeting new people. And then there's anxious people that hate it. And I just think, how can we have two types of people where the situation can be exactly the same but those two people feel so differently about it? And it just makes me think, why should I feel anxious about something when somebody else doesn't? And I don't know why, that just really helps me. And I just think, Georgie, switch off and go and do it. It's kind of like a block it out and then you just move on. Years worth of getting used to blocking out anxiety means that I'm quite good at it now. I am a little bit nervous, but I'm trying to get through it. But overall, I, whenever I meet new people, I'm quite a chatty person, which is very opposite to how I used to be, but I am quite chatty when I'm meeting new people and I do, you know, I will go up to somebody and talk to them. Um, I don't know why, I just do, I never used to. Hi, I know that this is a bit of a random thing. Um, just got a few more questions since I filmed this video, so I thought I would include them in. Sorry, it's not focused on my face. It's focused on this sofa. Um, wait there. Oh, I think it's focused. Um, but basically, I've got a few more questions since I filmed that video, so I just wanted to include them in there because I think they're really good questions, and it links on to what I've just talked about. And Emperor Haram... Emperor Harambe... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Emperor Harambe asked <laughs> So I can't stop laughing. Sorry, I'm just in one of those moods. How should I interact with my new friend that has selective mutism? So I presume they know that that's what I used to have, which is why they're asking me that. I think that when you've got or when you know somebody that's got selective mutism, it's so difficult to understand where they're coming from if you haven't experienced that yourself because you just you know they will probably ignore you or ignore other people and you just can't understand why and it is not because they are choosing to do that really and truly they're you know wanting to say something but i think the best thing that you can do is to not force them into anything don't try and make them do things that they're uncomfortable with so for example that this is a stupid example well this is a real example but for example if you're at school and I don't know you need to enter a class to ask a teacher something and they can't do it and they say they don't want to don't say oh no you do it like go in you know and you think that you're helping them out by kind of pushing them forward to do things like that don't make them you know be put in situations where they're not comfortable with do it yourself if obviously you can do it but yeah but what i'm trying to say is don't push somebody that has selective mutism into a situation because you think you're helping them that doesn't help really that that doesn't help at all just listen you know if they do talk to you because i know that selective mutism people can talk to some people and can't talk to other people so if they can actually talk to you in the first place then listen to what they have to say and just respect that they are struggling so much just to do an everyday task and it's not a, a thing of i'm gonna decide to not talk today or i'm gonna decide to do this or it's not a thing of them just trying to do something it's a barrier of i can't do this it's like almost a physical barrier so try and be a little bit more understanding and don't make them do what they don't want to do and try and kind of do the things um put you know your hand up in class for them say you know if you are at school um and they want to ask the teacher something ask the teacher for them because i know it sounds like you're not helping them by doing that but actually you are because you're making them feel a little bit more comfortable and not worried and eventually you know over time they will start to do these things themselves but nobody forcing them to do it will make them better so if you've got a friend with selective mutism patience is key try not to get angry at them and try not to force them to do anything and just let them know that you're always there for them and that they can rely on you in situations and things like that 
so thanks for that question um, and then I did also get another one from Angel SFM and they are a new and they also um, commented on one of my other videos saying they're a new subscriber so thanks for subscribing to my channel um, what games have I played growing up well oh Monopoly um, I'm talking about board games here by the way but I will talk about actual like like game console games but I love Monopoly I also love Pictionary like I still play these games now but as a child I used to play them a lot oh I used to have this game that I absolutely loved I was obsessed with it's called Mousetrap I don't know if anyone remembers that it took a million years to set up but I absolutely loved it I didn't actually play the game I just played with the mice and the cheese so yeah but in terms of like game console games I really like um we had a Wii a Wii. It's actually still down there. I don't know if you can see. It's just like that white thing there. Um, and I used to love Mario Kart. Still do. It's a classic. Mario Galaxy. Me and my brother used to play Mario Galaxy together because we can play it as a two player. And I loved that. So yeah, Mario Galaxy was a good one. Um, oh, and Ratatouille. Was that on the Xbox? I think we played Ratatouille. I think it was on the Xbox. Um, it was. That's a good game. I liked that. In fact, I want to play that now. Um, I want to go back and like play over old games because it's not that I you know it's just reminiscing and it's also still fun so yeah and I don't really play any games now now I like games like Brain Master to test my brain but yeah thanks for your question and um, I think that's it for now unless I get some more and I might insert them in so yeah See you. Ryan Art said, what made you want to start your YouTube channel? I've answered this many times. It's literally the same question in every Q&A. I feel like I always answer it so different in each one. But I'm going to talk about why I make videos still now. That's what I'm going to talk about. Um, well, I first started my channel because I loved watching what people did and I wanted to do that myself. I still make videos now because I love to be able to express my opinions and I love to be able to talk about things that I'm passionate about like mental health, um, happiness, things like that. But I also love for there to be an element of creativity. I can come up with ideas, you know, they're not really original ideas or anything, but I like doing my makeup on camera. I also like doing vlogs and it just gives me a chance to kind of look back and watch my life, you know, especially with the vlogs and things like that. So there is a lot I love about making videos that I don't ever want to. I do make some money from my videos now, which is really, really good. And I have just had my second AdSense payment. You know, I am earning some money from my adverts and from my videos and things like that. But that's definitely not the motivation because if it was, I would give up by now because you don't earn that much from YouTube. Warren Gender said, why are you so bad? Oh! Nearly fell. Um, I hope that answered your question. Okay, Dominique Benz asks, by the way, sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Hobbies. Hobbies, making YouTube videos. I like baking, watching YouTube videos, travel tips. I don't go traveling um, at all. I have been on holidays to places. I've been abroad a few times. I went to New Zealand once and obviously we traveled through New Zealand, but I was 12 years old then so i don't really have any travel tips because i don't travel very often at all um what hair colors do you have i think they mean kind of what hair colors i've dyed my hair um this color right now isn't really my natural color but if you can see what's coming through here the roots is natural everything else isn't really natural i kind of dyed it a darker brown a few months ago because it had gone quite light and i like it to be a little bit more brunette i like it to be this color basically but I've dyed my hair purple before, not bright purple, just a kind of purpley colour and more of a reddy kind of purpley brown colour. So I've never really, you know, gone out my comfort zone really at all. I've kind of stuck to the same colour. My favourite hair colour on a person is brown hair, which is obviously good. I don't know why uh, this is going a bit of a sidetrack, but I always tend to like things about myself. Now, I know that sounds very, I don't know, obnoxious, but... I like brown hair, I like blue eyes, which I kind of have, mine's like bluey, greeny, grey. I also like my favourite name in the world is my own name, Georgie. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, I do tend to like things that I actually have. Just random, let's carry on. 
future plans. Future plans, well, I'm going to uni for the next three years, doing accounting and finance. Then I hope to become an accountant, you know, slow process, whatever. Um, move out sort of after uni, you know, if I can, whatever. And, you know, just a very, you know, just see what happens, you know? I don't really have any plans. You just take life as it comes. Emily Caitlin asked, where are some places you'd love to travel to? Um, I'd love to go back to New Zealand because that was the best experience of my life. I think it was the people that were there. I have some relatives over in New Zealand that made the trip amazing. So I'd like to see them again. So if that takes traveling to New Zealand, then, you know, so be it. But I'd love to go there again. I also want to go to Italy, France again, like cute little countries like that. I don't have any desire to go. Oh, actually, and America. I want to go to America. But then the thought of that kind of scares me. I don't know why, but maybe one day. Georgie's mama says, which is my mum by the way, who do you love the most, me or dad? And then replying to her own comment, she said, or oh, what do you like about me the most and what do you like most about dad? I'll answer that. What I like about mum is that, <laughs> the way I've, take, I've taken so long to answer this question, mum's just gonna click off the video. Um, I like, that mum, me and mum share, I don't know, it's weird because I feel like me and mum share the same opinions on some things, but then me and dad also share the same opinions on other things. I think I'm, in my own head, I don't know how to answer this question, but I'm just gonna ramble. In my own head, I think I'm most similar to my dad in terms of my opinions on things and my views, but, my mum is quite a positive person sometimes, and so am I. Whereas my dad is more pessimistic and looks sort of more to the negatives than the positives, and that is not me at all. So yeah, I also like how my dad's quite funny. He pulls a lot of faces and says a lot of sayings that's just funny, so I like that. Um, but I can't, you know, it's very difficult because it just is. Raya June, okay, I'm gonna have to leave this person's name on the screen because I'm so bad at pronouncing names. But she asked, when did you start your YouTube channel? Well, before this channel, I did actually have another channel called Gigi Beauty and this was, um, I called it Gigi Beauty and I had that channel for just over a year, I think. Was it nearly two years? I'm not sure. Um, probably just over a year and I had about 800 subscribers on that channel and it was deleted by my ex-boyfriend when we broke up so I started that one when I was 14 or 15 I think and then this channel I also called GG Beauty to start with and I've had this channel for about two years now so when I was about 16 I started this channel straight after the other one got deleted and then I changed my name on this channel to Georgie because that's my name and I just felt that suited my content so I had this channel for about two years and um, they also asked how old are you? I'm 18, my birthday is in January so I will be 19 on the 8th of January 2019. Fuzz123 asked how do you feel about going to uni? I've kind of already touched upon this but I always thought that I would be absolutely bricking it but I always tell myself when the situation arises, when something happens, you actually deal with it a lot better than you think you would. And I stand by that in every single situation in life. And to be honest with you, I'm actually quite calm about it. And I think it's because I've organized every other aspect in my life so that actually all I have to focus on is uni. I'm ready for a fresh start. I'm ready to meet new people. And all of my friends are still staying in Lincoln, which I'm so happy about, so that makes me feel so much better. Um, Maya Gray or Mia Gray asked Nicki Minaj or Cardi B, neither. Asked Saya, oh my God, I can't pronounce this name. I'm gonna leave their name on screen. But they asked, do you ever wear fake lashes? No, I've worn them twice. I first of all put them on once when I was probably like 12, just as a joke and they look terrible. I then put them on probably one or two years ago, probably like a year and a half ago, just some cheap ones from Primark. And again, they looked horrifically bad. It was actually in a vlog, I can't remember which vlog, but it was in a vlog and they looked terrible. I've never been a fan of false lashes. 
on myself or even on other people. I don't really think they're necessary, to be honest. I think, you know, people look good without them, so it's not needed. And then Orbinator, which is Aubrey, he's been on my channel several times, says, if you could move to one country to live there to start a family, where would it be? Did he say one country? Well, I take it he means not this country because otherwise I would just say England. So aside from England, it would probably be New Zealand because they speak my language, English. The people there are really nice. The countryside is amazing and it's just a great country with great people in it. And I think it's most similar to England than any other place. It's very far away, but if my whole family moved over to New Zealand, then I don't see what the issue would be. So yeah, I'm gonna say New Zealand. Johnny Coxon asked, what's your favorite band? Sorry, I nearly forgot to uh, do that because he asked me on Snapchat. Um, my favourite band, I don't really have a favourite band because I don't really listen to music very often, but I do quite like the Arctic Monkeys. I really like quite a lot of their songs and their style of singing and just, you know, the vibe I like. So I would say them, but there is loads of other bands that I also like as well. But again, like I said, I'm not really a musical person in any way. I don't even listen to music very often well ever like i don't ever listen to music unless i'm in the car and some music comes on so this is the end of my q a thank you for all the questions that you gave me to answer in this video i hope i've answered them all so thanks for everybody that asked me questions give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it i want to do some more q a's um coming up in a few months so you know get your questions stocked up and subscribe for more content on this channel and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye!